as a living environment. <laughs> um, some of you may know I'm from Utah. Um, and at this point in my life, I wasn't very familiar with the history of Utah. I didn't know a lot about it. Obviously, I was like five years old um, when uh, I began living in this haunted house. But a little bit of backstory you should know. There were a lot of people a long time ago who decided to pack up all their belongings, travel across the west, and settle in what is now known as Utah. The pioneers. And so, um, they, you know, they built homes, they created settlements, and uh, you see a lot of that evidence. If you come to visit today, there's like a lot of attractions and stuff like that around here. Just so happened that in this state of need, my mom and dad were able to find a place to live that was insanely cheap. And it just so happened to be an old pioneer home. Um, and I don't want it to sound like this was some little log cabin, like it was a very nice pioneer home. I'm trying to think, like picture gothic architecture, you know, like the, what do they call those things, not golems, gargoyles, you know, like how people had those statues and stuff on gothic architecture, picture a two-story home um, in a giant field, you know, there's some apple trees surrounding it, there is a well which is random. I mean, how many people do you know that have a well at their house? Like the one with a bucket and a rope that you can, you know, get water out of. There's a giant empty barn and uh, just kind of a little bit of a dilapidated looking house that at one point was probably the talk of the town. And that's where we lived when I was a kid. Spanish Fork, Utah. She's like, yeah, I've had, a, I've had a hard time renting this place out, uh, but I'm going to give you a really, really good price on it. We'll get you in quick. You're a young family, and uh, let's just, uh, you know, play it by ear, see how, see how long you last kind of a thing. Like, it was a very strange, <laughs> very horror movie introduction, you know, to this house. But we were poor. The rent was cheap. sister and I, we moved into this house. At this point, I was like five or six years old, so I was just barely, like, really becoming conscious of my surroundings. Um, I wasn't yet in school, I don't think. But, um, so I have a very vivid memory of this place. The interior, um, it was like a very traditional, but like, I mean, the wallpaper was, it seemed like nobody changed the wallpaper. It had like yellow tapestry, you know, they had like roses and flowers and stuff. Um, the floors were very creaky. It was very dimly lit. Like I said, at one point, I think it was a very nice place. But by the time we moved in, it, uh, you know, started to fall I mean, not in any major way, except for one. <laughs> the house. We very quickly learned within, like, the first few days of living there, was infested, infested with snakes. The house was infested with snakes. They were everywhere. You wake up in the morning, you open up the cupboard to get a bowl to make some cereal, and there's snakes in the cupboard. You go to the bathroom to take a shower. There's snakes in the shower. And, uh, you know, they varied in size. Some were very big, some were pretty small, but they were all harmless. They were just little garter snakes. And, uh, of course, my mom hated that so much. You know, um, you run into snakes. 
snakes every day living in this house. My brother and I, on the other hand, were in heaven. We loved having snakes in our house. <laughs> we would run around and we would catch them and collect them and we had a giant plastic bin where we would deposit them and then we'd keep them as pets. We'd feed them, you know, mice and stuff like that. But we had so many snakes that we collected during my time living here. And we enjoyed it. It was like living in a pet store. You know, we had all these pets surrounding us. <laughs> so that was a, a concern. You know, that definitely is not desirable uh, when it comes time to pick a place to live. But, you know, we were poor and uh, rent was cheap. So we could, we figured we could put up with the snakes. The second thing that uh, hinted that this house might be a little bit haunted was that my mom started to behave strangely at night. My dad tells the story of them just being asleep in bed one night and then around two or three in the morning, you know, like the witching hour or whatever, my mom would just sit up straight out of bed from a lying position to a sitting position quickly and her eyes would be wide open and she would just be staring ahead of her into the closet and it was very dark in this house obviously the lights were off there was nothing to see but she would just stare ahead with a blank expression on her face dad would, at the very beginning, he was more annoyed than concerned, but he's like, what are you doing? Like, go to sleep. And my mom, without turning her head to address my dad, without averting her gaze from the closet, would say something along the lines of, there are people watching us sleep. <laughs> and my dad
position of consciousness. I'd be sitting there in my bed, I'd be laying down, like just trying to doze off, and all of a sudden I would hear somebody approaching my bedroom door from the outside. Uh, the house was very creaky, right? So I'd hear the footsteps, and uh, they were very slow, but I'd hear these creak footsteps. I would hear somebody fumbling with the door handle, and I would see the door swing open. And I would always expect to see, like, my mom or my dad, but, um, a complete stranger would be standing there in the doorway. Difficult to make out the details, but the more and more I had this reoccurring, you know, dream or whatever it was, the more detailed her face became. She was an old woman, and she had white hair. It was very white, very curly. She had pitch black eyes. Pitch black. There was nothing there. Like an absence of eyes is more like it. And she, she was wearing a nightgown. And uh, like if I was a really good artist, I could draw her details. Like I have that image kind of burned into my head. But she would just stand there in the doorway and she would watch me. And the look on her face was a confused look. It wasn't that she was mad or angry or malevolent in any way. She was just confused as to why we were there in her house. And she'd say, who are you? What are you doing in my house? And then she would turn around and she'd walk away. And this happened more than once. And I never felt scared of it per se, but um, I remember like talking about it to my parents. You know, I'd wake up and be like, I think there was somebody here in our house last night. Someone was watching me. And of course they're like, what are you talking about? And I told them about her. And, uh, they shared a bit of information that all of a sudden made the entire experience make sense. Before um, we moved into this home, our landlady had stored her mother here. Her mother had dementia. She was very old. Um, Alzheimer's, you know, forgetting everything. And for her own I don't know if safety is the word, because it sounds a little bit um, twisted. She would kind of just store her mother in this house. She would lock the doors, and she'd, you know, check in on her and bring her supplies, bring her food, bring her whatever, make sure she was being taken care of, but it was kind of like a holding place for this old woman who eventually died in the house. <laughs> and So 
just really eerie. You know, we just pretended that this part of our house didn't exist. We just keep the doors closed. We would never go in there. Um, and it just, just really was uncomfortable. Um, I think we later found out that when this landlady would leave her mother, the mother would stand in this room and watch her out the window as she left. And I think it always induced panic and anger and confusion in her mother. And she would just have a meltdown in this room, essentially. And we found that out later, too. Like, after we just kind of felt an uncomfortable kind of presence in that room. <laughs> so, yeah, a little bit crazy. Um, and I, I talk to my parents even now, and I ask them about this, and they, they affirm everything that I've been saying. Um, they are like, yeah. It's crazy we lived there. It's crazy we put up with what we put up with, you know. The snakes, and the nightmares, and the ghosts, and the scary room, and the history of the home. Um, all kind of eerie, you know. Um, last thing that kind of made the house feel weird is just that we discovered, like, after a few months of living there, that there was an additional room that you could only enter from the outside. It was like a basement room. And uh, you, you walk down a stairwell, you know, a little stone stairwell, and it's kind of hidden. I mean, like I said, it was a decent-sized house. But there's just this empty basement underneath our house that we just really weren't aware of. And uh, <laughs> when we became aware of it, it kind of freaked us out, you know. How long has this been here? How did we not know this was here? The floor was just dirt, like hard packed dirt. And um, like you could see through the floor into the kitchen and stuff. So just kind of freaky. But uh, yeah, man, there's a lot of things I could tell you about this, but I genuinely think that like we lived in a haunted house. Like wholeheartedly, I think that. I didn't, I didn't live in fear, however, I was never, like, scared um, to be in my house. It, if anything, it was kind of an adventure for me. I found, I kind of found it exciting that the house was potentially haunted, you know? And that's probably what made me the way that I am now. Like, like I said, I really enjoy being scared. I love scary movies. I'm the kind of dude that will watch a scary movie alone just because it, induces fear to a greater extent, you know. But, uh, anyways, that's a little bit of a sneak peek into my lore. You know that I live in a haunted house now. Um, and I'm curious what you guys think about that whole thing. Have you lived in a haunted house?